Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is the sixth lecture for this course Political Parties and Party System in India. And in this lecture today we are going to discuss uh, the um, history, ideology, leadership and vision of Indian National Congress. And Indian National Congress which is also known as Congress Party has played a very significant role both in pre-independent India as a uh, movement party and also in the post-independent uh, India where it dominated the uh, national politics f uh, both at the center and the state during the first two decades after the independence and this we have discussed in uh, a lecture on party system in India as well. Today we are going to basically focus on the history of uh, uh, this party starting from its formation and you can also uh, see the process of democratization and politicization of the masses, their mobilization is also uh, um, uh, this part of uh, um, uh, evolution of Congress party from uh, its inception to its post independent phase which we can divide into different phases. So, in this lecture today we are going to discuss this uh, uh, history of Indian National Congress. In the second and final part of uh, this lecture, we will be focused on the role of leadership in Congress party and why it is declining and what is the role of leadership in uh, the decline of Congress party uh, in contemporary uh, times. And also we will discuss finally the ideology and the vision of uh, uh, Indian National Congress about India, uh, the kind of India they want to build and how that is different from the vision of India uh, as uh, presented by other opposition political parties. So, uh, Indian National Congress which is popularly known as Congress party is one of the oldest party in India, uh, oldest parties in India and also in the world. That is the legacy or inheritance of uh, Congress party uh, which uh, makes uh, it a kind of umbrella party, a kind of um, uh, party with, with um, um, a strong or rich heritage or legacy, uh, a party which has immense contribution in democratization of the polity in winning uh, independence from the British rule a party which help in the mobilization of the masses, especially in the rural India and uh, uh, in that way also in a sense training uh, the people for uh, taking participation in the politics first during the anti-colonial struggle and also in the post-independent phase. So, uh, Congress party in India and also uh, if you uh, compare it with other parties in the world remain one of the oldest parties uh, which is founded in 1885, which was founded in 1885. It had played a uh, critical role during the national movement and um, the characteristic of the national movement broadly speaking was shaped by the policies and programs of the Indian National Congress, especially after uh, Gandhi took the leadership of uh, Indian National Congress, the uh, non-violent uh, method of a struggle for independence was something that is credited to uh, uh, the Congress party <coughs> under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. And after uh, the uh, political independence in 1947, it played a dominating role in Indian politics. So much so that uh, as we have discussed in a lecture on party system, the first two decades, it formed government both at the center and the state and therefore many scholars 
categorized this period of party system in India as the Congress system because it was the overwhelmingly dominating um, or um, um, uh, umbrella party where uh, there was uh, different kinds of opinions uh, which ranges from the left to the right which Congress party represented. So, uh, it has um, uh, rich uh, contribution in uh, both pre and post independent Indian politics and first few decades after independence was dominated by the Congress party. Even after that Congress party continued to dominate the national party politics, but gradually we see the rise of regional party and since 90s again uh, the rise of uh, BJP as the alternative to uh, Congress at the national politics. So, um, it has played an important role in building modern India into a secular socialist and democratic republic. Given the majority that Congress party enjoyed um, after the independence, it is to its credit that it laid the foundation for a modern secular socialist democratic republic in India. It is also called centrist party in Indian politics as it avoids the ideological extremes of both left and right. So, uh, within the party there were factions who did represent the opinions or voices from the left and right, but overall policies and programs of the um, uh, Congress party avoided the ideological extreme of both left and right. And unlike many other social cleavages party and social cleavages I mean the um, complexities uh, that exist in any society, be it on the basis of class or caste, religion and language and those social cleavages led to the formation of different kind of political parties that represent the particular social cleavages whether it is caste or religion or class and so on. So, unlike those parties which represent the social cleavages, a Congress party do not have any particular or a specific support base. So, uh, it always sought to represent the interests of all Indians including those who were excluded, weaker and from the marginal sections of the Indian society. And this legacy of uh, Congress is from the uh, pre-independent times as well. So, where uh, you uh, find many groups like Hindu Mahasabha or um, Muslim League claiming to represent uh, the interest of particular community, Congress party continuously um, assert that it represent all Indians across the class, language, religion, caste and ethnicity and so on. So, uh, this legacy uh, Congress party continue to express even in the post independent India and therefore, in the within the Congress party you have um, um, uh, communities from different socio, uh, socio economic backgrounds and also its policies reflect uh, these broad um, uh, divergence uh, that uh, Congress party had within itself. So, it represented uh, a the ideological uh, spectrum from left to right and also different segments of Indian society and that was the uh, plural uh, rich or conciliatory approach within the Congress uh, party unlike any um, uh, social cleavages uh, uh, parties which represented the interest of a particular community or a particular caste. In terms of economic policy, we find Congress party has now supported a new uh, liberal economic reforms, but it also claims to represent uh, the concerns and interest of the common man. So, Congress party for a very long time argued about uh, import substitution uh, growth. That means, we should develop economy or produce uh, things which we will consume and will rely less and less in, uh, in uh, on import. Uh, so, and it has certain um, um, protection or certain um, uh, um, prohibition 
in terms of exports or imports of goods for a very long time. That kind of economic policy is a change where the Congress party has initiated the new liberal, liberal reforms and uh, uh, that new liberal uh, reforms is for uh, the rapid economic growth and development. However, Congress party tries to balance this rapid growth and development with a human face by protecting the interest of the common man, at least so it claims. So, um, in uh, ideological uh, terms, except uh, its economic policy, you see hardly any um, uh, uh, radical change in terms of its uh, socio-political uh, outlook and uh, programs. Congress party has experienced many splits and merger and despite its uh, former dominant position, it is on continued interest and the opinions of different sections of the society, not necessarily always uh, um, in uh, um, uh, agreement to each other. So, the uh, interest groups or the communities whose interests were uh, contradictory, for instance, the landlords or the peasants, Congress party managed to uh, reconcile the competing or different uh, interests um, and represent the interest of all the segments and the sections of the society. Party developed its characteristic continuous decline. So, uh, uh, since 1967, we see uh, uh, the um, uh, weakening or decline of uh, Congress party and its domination and it has reached now to such an stage where in 2014 and 2019, it has won only 44 and 52 seats in the Lok Sabha respectively. So, uh, this clearly shows how uh, uh, Congress party has over a period of time uh, declined from its position of dominance to, uh, to a stage where it has about 50 uh, member of parliaments in the lower house of the Indian parliament. Now, if you look at its history in details, in pre-independent India, Formation and growth of Congress party can be traced back to the national struggle, um, um, uh, national struggle for India or uh, uh, freedom movement. On 28 December 1885, some social reformers, lawyers and journalists attended the first session of the Indian National Union in Bombay and the conference was later renamed as Indian National Congress. So, that is the beginning uh, of uh, uh, the Congress uh, party and in the succeeding session, party criticized the government policy, government here is the British government in India and acts like uh, the Indian Council Act of 1892 as according to uh, party, uh, these acts do not give Indians right to elect their own representatives. So, uh, since then, in every following session, the number of delegates and members joining the party has increased substantially and that reflected the diversity and pluralism that exist within the party. So, uh, uh, from its inception uh, and uh, subsequent um, uh, sessions of the Congress party, there has been substantial uh, growth in terms of number of delegates and members joining the uh, uh, party and uh, party uh, did represent the interest and the opinions of different sections of the society, not necessarily always uh, um, in uh, um, uh, agreement to each other. So, the uh, interest groups or the communities whose interest were uh, contradictory, for instance, the landlords or the peasants, Congress party managed to uh, reconcile the competing or different uh, interests um, and represent the interest of all the segments and the sections of the society. Party developed its characteristic from a moderate to an extremist party and under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi, it truly acquired the status of a mass party. So, that was the phase uh, during uh, 1920s when Gandhi, uh, under Gandhi leadership, Congress really expanded 
beyond its middle class base of moderate and extremist phase to uh, include uh, the peasants, um, uh, the women, um, students and so on. And gradually uh, it became a mass, uh, mass movement or a party which mobilized the large number of masses across the length and breadth of the country. The party uh, was successful in uniting people coming from different backgrounds such as caste, class, religion, language and ethnicity to fight against the British. So Congress party in a sense provided a platform for different uh, social groups or uh, communities coming from different backgrounds, a platform to express their uh, views or opinions and uh, that lead to a kind of common uh, opposition to uh, British, uh, British rule. So from the very beginning there is a kind of um, uh, expression of different opinions, uh, different voices from the platform of the Congress party and uh, that lead to some kind of um, um, uh, split or also uh, opposition or uh, the approach in uh, the Congress party to reconcile between or among the competing voices or uh, interest groups. A decade after its formation, there emerged two factions, extremists and the moderates within the Congress party. The moderates led by Gopal Krishna Gandhi, uh, Gopal Krishna Gokhale were inspired by constitutional methods of bringing about reforms and greater representation for Indians. So the moderates were constantly fighting for political reforms, more representation of Indians through constitutional means by signing petition, uh, submitting uh, memorandums and so on. Whereas the extremists led by Bal Gangadhar, uh, Tilak and others were inspired by the method of boycott, protest and direct action. And that lead to a strong um, um, uh, factionalism. Uh, within the Congress. It was a split also because of their uh, different approach or method uh, to politics. Um, uh, the party strongly opposed the British policy of separate Hindu-Muslim electorates and worked towards achieving Hindu-Muslim unity and that remains one of the sole objective of Congress party during the national movement. Besides fighting the British, it also strived towards forming Hindu-Muslim uh, unity. The Congress under the leadership of Dada Bhai Naroji for the first time raised the issue of Swaraj or self-government in India and since then there have been different debates, different approaches whether we should fight for dominion status or for complete Swaraj and so on. Uh, however, it was first expressed uh, in, uh, in Congress platform by Dada Bhai Naroji and in Bombay session in 1915, the party allowed delegates from the extremists who parted their ways from the moderate dominant Congress party to take direct action to um, launch boycott and protest uh, to, uh, against the British and uh, the policies of the British government. Uh, in Bombay session in 1915, they were allowed to rejoin Congress and in 1916, uh, in Lucknow session, extremist uh, returned to the Congress fold and also there was some kind of uh, mutual understanding or cooperation developed between Congress and Muslim League to uh, uh, launch a united struggle for independence against the British. Congress party launched many struggle during the independence and has organized uh, organizational presence throughout the length and breadth of uh, the country. So, uh, Congress party was the first uh, party which had its provincial committees and also district level committees and it uh, covered uh, length and breadth of India and that penetration to hinterland or um, uh, deep into the Indian society was the greatest advantage uh, uh, for Congress in mobilizing the uh, masses for the movement against the British during the uh, um, pre-independent uh, India and also in the post-independent India to 
um, um, communicating its policies and programs to the masses and also influencing them to vote for uh, uh, their candidates. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, Congress party had that organizational presence across the length and breadth of the country. Its notable movements during the pre-independent um, India was non-cooperation movement along with uh, Khilafat movement in 1920s, civil disobedience movement in 1930s, quit India movement in 1942. Uh, uh, so, these movements help in mobilization of India's rural masses and also pave the way uh, for independence in 1947. Congress along with fighting for political struggle also uh, launched many social cultural uh, reforms movement, also uh, movement uh, in um, transforming uh, education or nationalizing education and so on. So, it formed Seva Dal, protested against the Jalia Wala Bagh massacre, opposed roll attack and communal violence and uh, it also began to take uh, participation in local municipal uh, bodies election and in 1937 election was held for the provincial legislatures. Uh, Congress won an absolute majority, majority in 5 out of the 11 provinces and it formed governments in 7 provinces. So, Congress party um, had established its um, uh, political uh, superiority over other uh, uh, parties like Muslim League and Hindu Mahasabha. Um, even uh, during uh, uh, the uh, pre-independent times. Uh, party was vehemently opposed to two nation theory and communalism. Hence, even in the polarized atmosphere on the eve of partition uh, that came along with India's independence, Congress party played a critical role in providing India with a liberal democratic constitution. And this uh, framing of liberal democratic constitution has played a very significant role in um, um, uh, ensuring the survival of democracy uh, in India and also a guide for uh, 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 governance or good governance in the country. Now, if you look at the journey uh, of um, um, Indian National Congress in post-independent India, which we have briefly discussed when we discussed uh, the evolution of party system. The first phase of Congress in post independent period began with the prime ministership of Jawaharlal Nehru, which marked the one party dominance. Uh, there were many groups working within the party, such as the leftist and the rightist faction, and this phase of party experienced intra party mobilization, conflicts, and rivalries, and towering figure of Nehru provided some kind of cohesiveness both in terms of ideology and also in terms of organization to ensure that Congress uh, 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 remain in a dominant position both at the uh, center and also in various states. So, uh, uh, there were Praja Socialist Party and Communist Party uh, which emerged as the strong as opposition parties. However, they could not work as a strong opposition to the Congress because of frequent splits and fragmentation within this party. If we compare uh, um, um, communist parties and the socialist party which were in a very um, um, strong um, position uh, during 1950s, if we compare particularly of communist party of today, they had uh, a stronger position uh, in 1950s and 60s. However, because of the split or fragmentation in this party, they could not provide uh, an alternative or present themselves as the strong opposition to the Congress. So, Communist Party for instance gained foothold in West Bengal, Kerala, Tripura and parts of Andhra Pradesh. However, it was no challenge to Congress dominance uh, in the national politics. 1967 election ended the political supremacy or the one party dominance of the Congress party. Although Cong Congress remained 
a dominant player at the center till 1989, except for a brief period in 1977 and 80s when Janta party formed uh, government at the center. So, at the national level Congress party did maintain its um, um, dominant status. Uh, however, in different states there was the emergence of state parties and strong uh, regional parties. Um, there were many factions, opportunists and lobbyists within and outside the party which uh, became more explicit um, uh, in uh, after the election of 1967 and certainly after the split in 1969 and personalization and centralization of power by Indira Gandhi which leads to high command culture in uh, politics. The organizational strength of the party has been on continuous decline. So, since then since the split of the Congress with personalization and centralization of power and weakening of organizational strength, there has been continuous decline of the Congress party from the position of uh, dominance to um, uh, a position where it is having around 50 MPs in the parliament. And this uh, uh, trend of continuous decline even when it is acknowledged by its leadership. So, Rajiv Gandhi or even Rahul Gandhi and many other leaders in the Congress acknowledge this um, uh, decline or the organizational weakening of the Congress, there has been very little effort or attempt to reverse this uh, trend. So, although Congress continued to form government at the center in 1980s and again in 1984, it lost in 1989 and a coalition of national front government composed of Janta Dal, BJP and left parties was formed at the center. However, this alliance of national front government did not survive for long because of BJP's involvement in Ram Janbhumi movement. And assassination of Rajiv Gandhi was a severe blow to the Congress party. The succeeding uh, general election of 1991 saw the prevalence of a hung parliament and Congress I however managed to form a minority government under the prime ministership of P. V. Narasimha Rao. Um, again there was a series of hung parliament after the general election uh, elections in 1996. 1998 and 1999, which usured a new era of pre and post alliance politics in India and both BJP and Congress began to form um, a new alliance or forge new alliance in different uh, states. Um, this uh, period also coincided with BJP emerging as the single largest party in the parliament and since then there has been steady uh, rise of uh, uh, BJP in Indian politics, where now uh, after about 25 years it has achieved a majority on its own. Uh, the Congress led UPA United, uh, United Progressive Alliance won absolute uh, majority and formed the government in 2004 and again in 2009. However, in 2014 and 2019, BJP led uh, NDA National Democratic Alliance has swept the poll. An even more striking feature of this uh, victory uh, is the fact that BJP obtained majority on its own. Uh, the number of Congress party <coughs> MPs in the lower house or the Lok Sabha, uh, lower house of the parliament or Lok Sabha is reduced to 44 and 52 in 2014 and 2019 election respectively. So, this shows the um, uh, stage uh, of where Congress party has reached from its position of dominance. The Congress party today lack an effective organization and support system and largely rely on the charismatic personality of its leader to deliver elector, electoral victories which is increasingly becoming few and far between. So, for a very long time um, it relied on Indra Gandhi and then on Rajiv Gandhi to deliver electoral victories, but now because of the weak uh, organizational structure 
and also lack of charismatic personality, its electoral victories are becoming increasingly few and far between. If you look at the leadership and the role of leadership in Congress party, we find Congress party had a galaxy of leaders since its inception days. So, if you recall uh, pre-independent India, there is the galaxy of leadership that Congress party produced precisely because it was the dominant uh, party or uh, main party fighting um, uh, the British. But there were other groups also like Hindu Mahasabha or Muslim League and many other uh, uh, parties, uh, also the communist parties. However, uh, the Congress party had a galaxy of leaders since its inception days. And even in the post-independent India, despite Nehru's uh, towering personality, there were many stalwarts of the Congress both at the national level as well as in the various states. So, uh, the dominant position of the Congress party was also because of uh, a galaxy of leadership that Congress party had and it produced and it allowed uh, them to express uh, their views uh, which was not necessarily always in accordance with the high command which was the later development uh, in Congress party under uh, the leadership of Indira Gandhi. Uh, Nehru uh, provided both ideological and organizational cohesiveness to Congress party. However, after his death, there was explicit factionalism, rivalries and ideological differences emerging within the party. And uh, those factionalism, rivalries and ideological differences become more explicit after the death of Congress which uh, gradually lead to its split in 1969. In Indian politics, role of a charismatic leader in attracting the attention of voters across religion, caste and class barriers towards the pol uh, policies and programs of uh, his her parties has always been immense. So, in Indian politics, the role of leader in mobilizing the masses or um, attracting the attention of the ma masses towards the policies and programs of his or own party has always been immense. So, if you recall uh, the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi or uh, Nehru or Indira Gandhi or even in the contemporary uh, phase uh, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So, they all have played a very decisive role in um, attracting the attention of voters towards the policies and programs of their uh, parties. In Congress, Nehru, Indira Gandhi and to some extent Rajiv Gandhi had that charisma. However, the decline of Congress party in recent decades is the result of the lack of charismatic leadership on the one hand and ineffective weak organization on the other hand. So, this combination of uh, um, lack of um, charismatic leadership along with weak and ineffective organization uh, uh, leads uh, to a very um, 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 weak position of Congress party in contemporary politics, where uh, once it has the ability, uh, it has, uh, it had uh, dominated the politics uh, in India, uh, both at the center and the state level in the first few decades after the independence. Now, if you look at its ideology and vision, we find Congress party has always stood for a liberal parliamentary plural democracy and inclusive notion of Indian nationalism. So, uh, the liberal parliamentary plural democracy along with an inclusive notion of Indian nationalism differentiate uh, Congress ideology from other uh, parties, which works on homogenization or uh, singularity, Congress party has always been accommodative, inclusive of new voices and the voices which are often contradictory and opposite to each other and constantly tries to reconcile those opposite or different voices. So, uh, Congress party and its ideology stand for a liberal parliamentary plural democracy and inclusive notion of Indian nationalism. It also stands for protecting the ethos and values of 
constitutional democracy. So, as we have uh, uh, discussed during uh, the uh, evolution of party system in India, Congress party did had uh, did enjoy uh, uh, absolute uh, dominant uh, dominating position in the first few decades, and yet it adhered to the constitutional parliamentary uh, form of democracy. In contrast to many such uh, uh, parties, where uh, they um, turned into an authoritarian or single party uh, 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 kind of polity, Congress party uh, nurtured or promoted uh, the, uh, different parties or the growth of different parties without ever trying to uh, suppress them or exclude them or um, uh, abuse its state power except for a brief period of emergency, Congress party adhered to this uh, principle of liberal parliamentary constitutional uh, norms and ethos while uh, uh, fighting for uh, 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 power or controlling uh, the state. Um, its ideology is guided by a Nehruvian brand of socialism, secularism and federal democratic structure of governance. It fights for uh, the protection of minority rights and against all form of extremism and communalism. So, in Congress party ideology, there is the strong um, um, uh, uh, sentiments or um, um, uh, understanding about protecting minority rights and fighting against all form of extremism and communalism. And therefore, Congress also represent a kind of centrist uh, party, which avoids the extreme of both left and right. Congress party in 1980s and 90 gradually moved away from uh, the economic uh, model as promoted by Nehru and later by Indira Gandhi and has adopted new liberal economic reforms. However, it wishes to combine the economic development and, gro uh, and growth with addressing the concerns of common men and uh, claims to protect their interests. If we study the electoral uh, uh, or election manifestos or electoral promises of the Congress party, which often reflect uh, uh, these trends, where on the one hand it is for economic progress or development, on the other hand it want to balance the economic growth and development by protecting the interest or concern of the common, uh, common man. So, uh, um, uh, its um, election manifesto reflect these uh, trends in the ideology of Congress party. It remains devoted to the Gandhian philosophy of truth and non-violence in politics, where uh, it is violence of all forms in terms of conducting um, um, uh, its polity or um, uh, fighting uh, for uh, the power. It is committed to protecting the rights and freedoms of uh, the individuals and communities and enhance unity among various groups and communities, abolishing poverty and emancipating the weaker section of society in order to sustain a democratic, inclusive and research, uh, resurgent India. So, uh, the approach and ideology of Congress party is to constantly strive for economic uh, progress and development on the other hand and expanding this uh, growth and development to uh, include more and more people out of uh, poverty or emancipating the weaker section, protecting the rights of the minorities or the individuals. And that has been the guiding ideological uh, position of the Congress party in Indian polity. It has a vision of uh, bringing economic development by generating more development of op uh, uh, employment opportunities for the youth, social reforms, advance in science and technology to make India a progressive nation. So, in contrast to other uh, uh, um, uh, parties, uh, in uh, Congress you have uh, a kind of realistic 
or pragmatic approach to politics where uh, they wish to uh, uh, achieve economic progress or economic development along, along with uh, a human face of such development or growth where they uh, want growth, but growth with employment or um, uh, social reforms or advance in science and technology to uh, make India a more uh, industrially developed, uh, developed nation. Its ideological vision is to fight communal and divisive forces that destroy the fabric of India's plural democracy. And Congress party has formulated many uh, uh, legislation uh, to um, um, uh, emancipate uh, uh, communities out of poverty. For example, uh, National Food Security Act in 2013 or programs like uh, Narega or Manarega, um, uh, uh, its um, um, uh, act, uh, acts like uh, Right to Information Act or path breaking legislation in terms of ensuring transparency uh, in, um, uh, in governance and empowering the people uh, or the citizen of India and enabling them to uh, take participate uh, uh, in uh, governing process and also hold the executive or the government accountable to what it does or it does uh, it doesn't do so um, there are many acts like nirbhaya act uh, 2013 and sexual harassment of women at workplaces act 2013 so congress uh, commitment for women's safety against sexual uh, sex crimes and harassment against women. Similarly, Land Acquisition Act 2013, Micro Op and Small Enterprises Order 2012, uh, Street Vendors Act 2014 showed the party's inclusive attitude towards the poor, weaker, and middle class people for the socio-economic uh, for their socio-economic development. So, uh, 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 to conclude this uh, lecture on the history of uh, Indian National Congress both in pre-independence and post-independent India and also its ideology, one can um, summarize it by uh, focusing on their um, uh, approach towards the parliamentary or the constitutional form of democracy on the one hand, empowering the masses on the other by um, its ability or approach towards Gandhian uh, philosophy of nonviolence and truth or reconciliation uh, without using violence uh, to achieve political uh, freedom and also ensuring the representation of those who are excluded and the marginalized has been some of the greatest uh, contribution Congress party uh, uh, has made to Indian uh, politics and Indian democracy. And um, even when it has uh, uh, a very dominant uh, position, it adhered to the principle of um, um, uh, democracy or uh, ethos of constitution to promote a vibrant multi-party democracy that we, uh, we have experienced. However, there has been a gradual uh, decline of uh, Congress party. Uh, we will uh, discuss the reason of such decline and also its contribution in Indian politics in the next uh, lecture. Um, uh, the issue that we have covered in this lecture for that you can refer to some of these uh, texts like Johansson parties and party politics in India. You can also refer to Adnan Faruqi and E. Sridharan can umbrella parties survive the decline of Indian National Congress. Again Praveen Rai and Sanjay Kumar, the decline of Congress party in Indian politics will give you some understanding about uh, the uh, gradual um, uh, decline of the Congress party. Um, MP Singh, the dilemma of the new Indian party system to govern or not to govern, Pratap Chandraswain 
dynamics of Indian party system, the emergence of competitive multi party coalition, Sudha Pai, regional parties and emerging patterns of politics in India are also some of the uh, good uh, articles and uh, text on um, the nature, uh, uh, the ideology, uh, vision and decline of uh, Congress party in India. You should also refer to uh, uh, the website to understand more about the history, ideology, leadership and contribution of the Congress party. So, that is all uh, uh, in today's lecture. I hope you uh, have learned uh, about um, Indian National Congress, um, its uh, formation and um, its contribution in both pre and post independent uh, India, uh, its uh, ideology and key um, uh, um, uh, principle or approach to the politics um, uh, and how uh, it decline what are its major contribution we are going to discuss in the next lecture. So, we have seen in this lecture how um, a Congress party um, has uh, played a very critical role in Indian politics both in pre-independent India and also in the uh, post-independent India. Uh, Congress party was also one, uh, one of the oldest party and first truly mass party in India, when in 1920s uh, as we have discussed under the le leadership of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, it uh, made politics uh, a, a domain where those who were excluded from uh, the politics or those who were uh, at the margin of Indian society, they also began to take participate in the politics. And that is perhaps one of the very significant contribution that Congress party has made to Indian politics, that it has given the marginal or the excluded section the courage or the um, um, strength to participate in uh, Indian politics. And it continues to nurture that participation even when it had the uh, uh, dominant position in the post-independent phase. So, um, uh, as we have discussed that it had uh, a very dominating position, but it did not try to control or suppress the voices of the opposition. So, uh, uh, in terms of uh, political participation and uh, mobilization of the masses, particularly those who were excluded or at the margin of Indian society has been the greatest contribution perhaps of uh, Congress party to uh, 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 Indian politics. Its other contribution is uh, a kind of non-violent approach to politics, which it uh, cultivated uh, from uh, pre-independence uh, time, particularly under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. Even in post-independent phase, the democracy in India has survived and we have uh, uh, attained the kind of development uh, we have seen without uh, relying to suppression or uh, excessive use of uh, violence. Uh, so, um, uh, Congress party uh, uh, to a great extent has played a role in this non-violent by and large non-violent nature of polity and democracy in India. So, there has been excesses for instance in um, uh, 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 during the time of emergency, but uh, 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 the path of democracy remains a, uh, um, inspiring or um, successful journey precisely because of the uh, uh, method or uh, the approaches to politics which Congress party has um, uh, adopted. The philosophy of Congress party that, um, um, uh, that is secularism, that talks about protection of minority rights, uh, that talks about um, uh, avoiding uh, uh, the role of religion in political matters or respecting um, um, all religion equally. So, um, uh, this uh, secular uh, politics of uh, uh, Congress party 
has also played uh, a role in avoiding the uh, divisive or the communal uh, forces and their growth in the in the country however it uh, uh, there are uh, uh, valid criticism of uh, such a approach uh, by uh, uh, many parties, particularly the BJP, when um, uh, they argue that uh, in its um, um, approach to secularism, it is used as an appeasement or minority appeasement by the Congress party, where true secularism means uh, what um, um, is uh, correct what is uh, um, uh, rightful for most of the uh, communities without making any difference between majority or the minority community. So, there has been uh, um, uh, a critique to the secular uh, secularism as um, uh, particularly developed in 1980s or 70s, uh, but the secular ethos if you um, uh, understand this polarized uh, context in uh, the time of independence, where um, there was partition of India on the basis of um, uh, religion largely um, uh, or two nation theory, Congress party provided a kind of a democratic um, uh, uh, secular foundation and the constitution of India, the text uh, which has guided the um, uh, government of different parties. Uh, both at the center and also at the state, which has uh, united India or ensured the unity and integrity of the nation and also uh, it has ensured the survival of uh, uh, democracy or vibrant democracy of India despite of its successes or uh, obvious weaknesses. Democracy in India has survived because uh, the text that Congress party even when it has absolute majority in uh, the constituent assembly um, um, took decision through consensus by including tho uh, those who were opposite uh, uh, to its uh, policies and philosophy on board while making uh, the constitution. So, for instance, during the time of uh, constitution making, it has uh, um, followed an approach where it uh, permitted uh, the voices of opposition to be freely expressed and ideas freely exchanged and discussed and uh, the uh, frame the constitution through consensus rather than imposing uh, the uh, ideas of few people or its own, part, uh, own party. And this uh, uh, parliamentary um, uh, democratic or plural uh, approach has um, uh, enabled India to uh, reconcile different forces um, or different kind of interest groups and the communities and provided them a space to, uh, to, to assert their demands, to fight for their demands and particularly the phase of 1980s and 90s when we see uh, mobilization around the issue of uh, Mandal among the intermediary caste or uh, the rise of uh, BSP or the Dalit politics, uh, the rise of uh, uh, BJP in terms of uh, uh, Mandir or Ram Janbhumi controversy and also um, 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 the uh, reforms or uh, debates around uh, 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 economic reforms, uh, Congress party had um, a crucial role. Uh, to play in terms of allowing those voices to emerge, um, uh, consolidate and also uh, participate in terms of uh, uh, policy making by forming the government at the state and also at the uh, national level. So, Congress party in that sense has many um, um, uh, contribution to Indian politics. Of course, um, uh, over a period of time, uh, it has declined. Um, and that decline has been obvious from its position of dominance to now in a position where it is struggle for, um, uh, for uh, uh, having um, uh, uh, in a strong opposition status even in the uh, parliament, because the number of MPs has been reduced to 
44 and 52 in 2014 and 2019 election. However, one should not uh, um, understand um, by this performance of uh, Congress party as their inability to revive. So, there, uh, there is a need or uh, the national politics um, in last 30 years uh, by and large alternates between NDA and the UPA led by Congress and the BJP. Even in the recent uh, elections in some of the assemblies like Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and also for a very brief time in uh, Karnataka, Congress party um, uh, won election. So, um, uh, there is the uh, scope of revival in the Congress. There is the ideology or the programs that uh, this party follows, which um, is um, 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 which has a scope in um, uh, uh, national politics today. Its organizational uh, strength needs to be strengthened, and um, uh, that is uh, absolutely necessary for it to uh, 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 communicate its policies programs and ideology effectively to the electorates. So, uh, the vision and ideology of Congress party remain very re relevant for India to survive as a plural democracy or a constitutional uh, uh, democracy. However, to do so, it requires a very strong effective organization. And in its contemporary phase, the combination of um, 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 weak or ineffective organization on the one hand and the lack of leadership on the other hand is something which uh, leads to the uh, uh, status where Congress party has uh, reached today. Now, um, with Sonia Gandhi and um, under the leadership of Sonia Gandhi, there has been attempt to revive the leadership at the provincial uh, level. So, uh, in many states like uh, Digvijay Singh in Madhya Pradesh, Ashok Gahlot in Uttar Pradesh, uh, Ashok Gahlot in Rajasthan and uh, Sila Dikshit in um, Delhi. They have been given enough autonomy or Captain Amrinder Singh in Punjab. However, Congress needs to nurture and give autonomy to its um, um, young leadership in different states to make its organization strong and effective and thereby communicating its uh, ideology and vision, which remains very significant and relevant even today for Indian politics. So, to do that, it needs to revive its organization, it needs to revive it a strong base and um, um, uh, that is all uh, in uh, today's lecture on um, uh, the history of uh, Congress party in uh, both pre and post independent India and also its ideology and vision and how their ideology and vision uh, differ from other parties and relevant uh, remain relevant in Indian politics today. Thank you.